Welcome everyone and welcome to this first LMP2 track guide. We are at Suzuka for IMSA this week and I thought I'd put a track guide series together for you in particular for the IMSA series. I may dabble in the ILMS as well too, um, especially when I know it's Silverstone next week. Uh, but this car is, I'm having so much fun in it and I think a lot of you guys are too. Um, the participation in IMSA seems to have gone up even more so since this car's been introduced. And it's really good to see proper multi-class racing throughout the series now in pretty much every split, maybe bar in the bottom split, um, but there's no longer just GTE races. Um, it's a minimum at least GTE and LMP2. I think a lot of people can um, agree with me here that it's just such a fun car to drive. So yeah, thought I'd put this together for you. I'm a little bit late in the week because uh, it was my birthday at the start of the week. Been very busy. And uh, I've, I'm also, as you may hear, a little bit bunged up um, as I'm feeling a little bit under the weather. So this lap time is uh, not the fastest that I can do, but as I said, I'm not feeling at 100% at the moment. Um, it's, it's good enough, I believe, for you guys to, to learn from, be faster and be more consistent. Now, Couple of notes, I am using the Pure Driving School setup this week. I normally interchange between PDS and uh, Craig's, do a bit of testing and see what suits me better. Now I have made a couple of tweaks to the PDS setup this week and that's in regards to the traction control. Um, the settings, there's a couple of slow corners around here. The hairpin that you've just seen go out of view in the camera. And the last corner where the, the setup that they provided was just a little bit too slippery. We'll talk about that in the track guide, um, in the uh, lap analysis. But yeah, made a couple of changes, so feel free to join my Discord. It's in the link in the description below where I will share my setup and you'll be able to see on screen the traction control settings that I've got in the base of the steering wheel anyway. But yeah, this track guide, for anyone who doesn't know and hasn't seen my Formula 3 track guides, we are gonna have the same format, so that's a flying lap with a far chase camera angle of the flying lap and then we are going to have a look back at uh, said laps with the um, with a track analysis really because as i said this uh, this this lap time was a 44 free but i had, my optimum is a 43 uh, 7 i know i can if i put a whole lap together i probably will be able to get that um, but there's a couple of areas here where you'll see time can be made up um, quite easily and we'll discuss that. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this. Um, if anyone who's new, remember to hit that like and subscribe button. Uh, even if you're not, remember to hit the like button, turn those notifications on. Uh, as I said, feel free to join the Discord in the link in the description below. And yeah, let's head into it.
So guys, let's have a look at that lap, shall we? So we are heading down the main straight into the first corner. And what we want to be keeping an eye out for is this pathway here on the left-hand side. If we just move it back a touch, it is right in line with the 50 board marker. But in most cases and in most um, field of views, you won't be able to see this marker. Um, so we use the path hit way here as it joins the track as our braking marker and also our turning marker as well. Because you can see, I'm starting to turn the steering wheel into the apex. Now, this corner is all about rhythm and flow. Um, if you shift down too quickly, uh, the car's going to want to pull up and you're just not going to utilize as much speed as you can um, running up into the center S's. So what we want to be doing is, as you can see, I'm applying the brake, but it's going to be trail braking through here. And we're going to kind of space out those gear changes and um, they're not going to be quick downshifts. They're going to be, it's going to be a little bit of space in between them, but we are aiming for this apex. And we're aiming this part here where you can see the rubber on the inside of the red and white curb. Now we don't need to be on this curb here and we can be a little bit away from it. Um, this car doesn't like curbs anyway, which you will see a little bit further on and may have seen already in the actual lap. But we, as we move this forward, we're shifting down into fourth. Just as we kind of come out the exit of this first apex, And then as we get into the flat section of the corner, we then shift down into third. Now, this next corner, or second half of the corner, because it is a double apex, we've allowed the car to move over to the left-hand side, utilizing all the track to open up the right-hander. Now, don't roll this through in third gear, because if you roll this through in third gear, we're just gonna struggle to get the rotation in the car which means we have to stay off the throttle for longer and it delays our drive out of the corner. Now, secondly, third gear has less torque than second gear. So the acceleration is nowhere near as much. So what we want to be doing as we play it forward, utilizing that trail braking all the way through, before we get into the apex, we shift down into seconds, just as kind of we're approaching the the, the uphill part of the track because this allows the car to rotate the front end in all the while still trail braking and then get into the apex once again not getting two wheels on it but as close as we can and then that's when we start to get on the throttle now i'm not getting on the throttle 100 here i'm not applying full throttle because my steering is currently 90 degrees and if I do that, the car's gonna spin. So we don't, don't wanna do that, guys. So we're ease, easing on the throttle, as you can see here. And as we do that, we open up the steering and we've navigated our way through the first sector. Nice, smooth, flowing first corner. Smooth is, is what that corner's all about, uh, a little prep. A bit of practice is required uh, to nail that first corner and to see how much speed you can actually take into that corner while feeling comfortable as well um, because this is all about consistency. Multi-class racing, IMSA are 45 minutes to an hour long. It's not just only about speed, it's also about consistency and navigating your way around the traffic. Of course, um, when you start to lap the traffic, the the GTEs and GT3s are not gonna be taking that corner anywhere near as fast as what we can in an LMP2 car. So, let's carry on and let's move into the center S's. Very twisty section of the track and it's, it's enjoyable, but they can also be a pain in the ass to say the least. And it's where a lot of time can be gained and lost. And in most cases, I see a lot of people using too much brake and that's where they lose the time. So we're gonna pay close attention to my throttle inputs here to see how little brake I actually use. So as we come out of the first corner, we're gonna move over to the right-hand side to open up the left hand up. Now I do, <laughs> do move over a, a tad too much here, uh, get the 
the right wheels on the grass, which is why I have the twitch here in the steering. But as you can see, it happens very quickly, even in slow motion. Before we get to the corner, we're gonna be lifting off the throttle. We don't wanna to touch the brake. We wanna allow the car to roll through the corner under its own momentum. Keeping it really as close to the curb as you can. I probably carried, uh, took a little bit too much curb there because you can see the car uh, bobble, which does affect the traction. But as I come out of that curb, I then shift down into third to get the rotation. It slows the car down and it also allows the rotation of the front end to get into this right hand. Uh, so as we come out of the corner, shift down into third because that just allows the rotation of the front end to get into this right hander. And as you can see, very, very little brake there. That is just like uh, barely touching the brake, uh, to say the least. And that is enough to allow the car just to help the front end once more as it shifted down, but to allow the front end to, to turn in, uh, to get that rotation. That's that's literally all you need. Some people you'll see will use almost full, full brake there and it's just not required. So, we're keeping it tight to this apex. We can cover this apex here. It is one of the very few corners that we can. Applying the throttle, straightening up the steering. Full throttle for a very short amount of time because this next corner is already upon you. and then we're lifting off. See how early I'm lifting off? I mean, I'm on full throttle for a blink of an eye there. All the while, not touching the brake at all. And then you can see there that as I'm coming to the top of the hill here, or out of this apex, I'm getting back on throttle, but I don't actually get all the way to full throttle. I'm still just a little bit under because the right hander here is upon you very quickly. Now this right hander is so easy to carry too much speed. You will see a lot of people uh, run a little bit wide here. In, what, in some extreme cases even go off. But what we want to do is to cover the brake again. Ever so slight trail brake in here because we want to keep it tight to this apex without getting on it. Just allowing the car under its own momentum to roll round. And then as we pretty much see this stripey um, or striped barrier here in line with our hands or in the middle of our screen, that's when we start to get back on the throttle. Because what this, keeping it tight for this apex, the reason we want to do that is because we, as you can see, is a swooping left hander here and we want to keep it tight to this right hander to be able to utilize and carry as much speed as we can because it's an overtaking opportunity here down into the next corner which is back this way now if we carry too much speed we're going to run wide even though there is a, a curb here that's that's not the ideal line um, because we cover too much track and there's not enough track to be able to sw quickly switch the car over from the left to the right and it just affects our run around this corner So we're back on full throttle. At the most, the furthest we move over, as you can see here, is middle of the track. But I'm allowing the car to move back over to the right-hand side, or I'm bringing it back over. And then very quickly, see how my steering pretty much goes straight to the left. I'm right and then left almost instantly. Um, there's, no, there's not enough travel forwards to keep my steering in a straight position for very long, um, if at all. So at this point, we uh, just as we get to kind of the bottom of the hill, we are lifting off the throttle. Once again, not using any brake. Um, the only way I would use brake is if I'm overtaking a car here um, in regards to a GTE car, GT3. 
And of course, if you've overshot it, um, you're not going to be taking this corner as quickly as you would at the start of a race with a full tank of fuel and um, cold tires, that is for sure. So we are lifting off here. And as I get around right about halfway round the corner, I'm getting on the throttle. But I'm trying to open up the steering as quickly as I can. Making use of this runoff. And then bringing the car back over to the left hand side to cover as little track as possible around this left hander. Now that is so important to get right guys because these LMP2 cars, as we know, are very good in the draft. Uh, they're very uh, efficient in the slipstream. If you get the drive on someone out of that right hander and then the swooping left, there's a prime overtaking opportunity here for you. So we are now coming up to, as you can see, the 15R, um, the bridge corners um, as we go under the bridge. Now, what we are keeping an eye out for is this 50 ball marker. That isn't actually our braking point. We're going to be braking, as you're about to see, around about the 75 marker, um, if there was one. There we go. And we're going to be shifting down into third gear here. Once again, not shifting down too quickly because if you shift down too quickly, the car will just pull up and um, get you in uh, all sorts of trouble and not carry as much speed through here. Now, this corner, the GTEs and GT3s can take it. We cannot. We cannot go over this corner. We have to keep it as tight as we can. Uh, the car will just bottom out and bobble up and down, which you will see very shortly, and we'll just lose traction and time. So we are carrying as much speed as we can through there, but without moving over to the left-hand side and getting on this light green AstroTurf. For anyone who's racing Zuka and iRacing, we all know this is an off-track. Uh, not only that, if we get this car too far over, um, this red and white curb here, which you'll see as we go round the next corner, um, there's, there's a bit of a drop like a ridge so the car bottoms out and the car bobbles, bobbles up and down and we just lose so much traction and time and um, so not only do you get the 1x for your troubles you also lose a crap load of time so this right hander is very much upon you instantly and um, there's not a lot of time to think <laughs> uh, before you start braking again as you can see i'm braking quite a bit before the corner um, one thing I would say to you guys is there's not really a visual braking reference here. It's more about feel, but I would suggest brake earlier than you think. Um, in, uh, you see, this is where you see most people go off is this corner where they run too wide and they carry too much speed or they cut the corner and the car is thrown off or they get themselves into all sorts of trouble around this corner uh, under the bridge uh, because they just, once again, carry too much speed. Very rarely do people I see in any type of car break, um, break too early for this corner. It's always the opposite. Um, so break earlier than you think if you're struggling with this corner. Down into seconds. If, if you carry a lot of speed, uh, as, Sometimes I've played around with shifting up into fourth before then, but I just, I think just leave it in third because it's one gear shift that you don't have to worry about. And because this, as I said, everything is upon you so quickly here. If you shift up into fourth, you're then having to shift down pretty much instantly to second. It's kind of wasted energy and kind of a wasted thought process. It just makes things that little bit harder. So as we go through here, we're trail braking, trail braking. Now, I actually do not get this corner correct. I carry too much speed here, and that is because I have got on the throttle too early. In any other car, Formula 3, GTE, GT3, you can really get the power down early here without the car running white. This LMP2 car, you just have to allow the car to to roll 
to probably be about here before you're able to get on the throttle. Um, I just got on the throttle too early and what happens is that my car drifts too far over to the left and as you can see there's that this dark bit here in the middle is the ridge that I was talking about and the car the two wheels are pretty much on the light astro turf here um, this the ideal line is to get the two wheels on the dark now if you get the two wheels on the dark part of the astro turf the car has so much grip it doesn't bobble and you're just able to carry that extra little speed um, through the, the right hand here and yeah I just got on the throttle too early and because of that as you're about to see the car's bobbling up and down and in particular when it comes off the end quite a severe bounce there and that's just lack of traction and I easily lost two temps um, maybe even more and it's, it's hard to imagine but it is that is how much speed difference um, you lose or how much speed you lose when that happens so yeah we want the two wheels to be on this green or dark green astroturf not the lighter stuff um, and in addition to that as well if you run wide um, I, I'm quite surprised now that this isn't an off track um, in time gone by this used to be an off track so I think they've brought the they've well, pushed the track limits out a bit on this particular corner so we are now on the run up to the chicane and we want to be hugging the left hand side and then as we start to see the apex bring the car over now we are going to be braking as you're about to see while we're still turning um, so we're going to be braking just before we get to the end of the red and white curb here because if we brake in the straight line if we wait until the track straightens out and brake in a straight line you will lock up um, your front left and you will just run wide um, if you don't lock up you'll have to lift off lift off the brake and you just yeah will lose a lot of time so we have to start braking as we're turning hugging the right hand side and then we get on the hard brake as we're in a straight line shifting down into first now it's important that you guys hug the right hand side and brake while under while being straight because we want to be over to the right hand side so that we can get the best exit possible and get on the throttle as early as we can without the traction control kicking in which we'll speak about in a second because so often and i've been i've been um subject to it in the past as well it's a discovery of my own upon watching other people race and the faster guys race a lot of people will point or already be pointing the nose of their car into the apex and they'll be in the middle of the track now what you're doing there is that you're coming in at a shallower angle and you're just not gonna get you're not you're gonna have to use more brake you're not gonna be able to get on the throttle as early as you can um, if you do that so follow by pretty much the racing line where the uh, the dark part of the track is the rubber we're down into first as you can see applying the brake trail braking through quite a lot of steering knock here and then as you can see in my throttle inputs as the car as the car is pretty much pointing straight at the wall opposite and um, where this first colored barrier is we start to ease on the throttle keeping it tight to the apex now in most cars they'd be applying a lot more throttle now but we can't because for one we've got a lot of steering input and two the traction control now what would happen now is that because we've got this steering input if we apply more throttle the rear of the car wants to come round so oversteer and what that does is that means that the car starts to slip and the traction control kicks in trying to get grip in those tires now what that does is that that just pulls the car up and just slows the car the whole process and the car kind of bogs down and you just lose all that drive out of the corner so 
that's why I changed the traction control settings uh, in the setup that was provided because while the traction control was quite low and suited this corner, uh, this hairpin, the last corner uh, out of this last chicane, which we will get to, um, it was quite slippery and I had to lift off the throttle and I was losing considerably more time in that exit of the last chicane than I was here at the hairpin. Um, I find, or I found that changing those traction control settings, actually I didn't lose any time at all um, in this hairpin. So that's why when we get around this corner, we have to make sure that the, the steering is straight and the car is relatively pointing down the track before we fully get on the throttle so that the traction control doesn't kick in. Um, like I said, wouldn't advise taking that traction control all the way off because you do need it around other parts of this track. It is an essential part of driving this car. Um, well, in driving this car fast anyway. But yeah, it's just get on that throttle, but don't get on that throttle too early, guys, uh, because they're not like GTE or GT3 cars, that's for sure. But yeah. As we get out, we are gonna play it and cover as little track as possible, full throttle all the way around. And then we come into Spoon. Now I'm gonna pause it here because very quickly, you're about to see our next braking marker. And we are looking at another path, concrete path that joins the track. And this is our braking marker, as you can see. Starting to apply the brake quite a fast entry in here. You can carry a lot more speed than you think. Same with the first corner um, at Suzuka. Bit of practice required to see how you feel comfortable under braking and how much speed you can carry through here. Now, as we get into this apex, as you see, I'm shifting down from fifth, fourth to third. Now the entry into this corner was absolutely fine, but unfortunately, as we get through this corner, about halfway through this corner, you apply a bit more throttle. Now, I applied too much throttle. I was carrying, my entry speed was too much. So what I should have done is I should have trail braked for a little bit longer, then applied some throttle um, and then back on the brake again. Now, because I applied too much throttle, I just ran a little bit wide. And um, what that does is, as you can maybe see there, as I apply it back, the car's at the moment tilted as it's on the red and white curb, but the right wheels just go over that and they get caught on that ridge. And as I said, the car kind of bottoms out a bit and you are now stuck on that until you run off the corner at the end. Um, it's kind of like a train track really, and there's no way of getting off. And while you don't get a one X, I am wide, I'm quite severely wide of this apex as you would have seen in the far chase camera angle. And unfortunately, what I then do is while I'm applying the brake, which is the right thing to do, only a little bit. I'm in second gear here, which we'll get back to in a second in the optimum way to take this corner. Um, second gear is the gear of choice. But what I do is that because I know I've run a little bit wide then I've lost that little bit of time. I get on the throttle a little bit too early um, out of the exit and I just get a snap of oversteer, as you can see, which while only little affects my top speed and the speed that I carry down into 130R because it is a long way into the last chicane and it is full throttle all the way. So a good exit out of spoon is very important and that is a once again, prime overtaking opportunity, 130R. Maybe not going around the outside of 130R, but on the run up to it, at least, um, you will be able to, you'll be uh, overtaking quite a few guys. So let's talk about the optimum line again. So as I said, very close. I just put too much throttle, or maybe should have been only half throttle there. Um, and you allow the car to drift out to the right, and then you start applying the brake again and you shift down into second. And there's no need, there's not really any need to keep it tight to the apex on the left-hand side. Um, we can be a little bit away from it. And then as we come out of the corner, 
we start to ease on the throttle and open up the steering. We don't want to get on the throttle too early because once again, we can get all that torque gives us a snap of oversteer and worst case scenario, we spin the car, um, which you will probably see quite a few people do, especially in the early stages of the race when you've got cold tires and cold fuel. So a, uh, the exit of spoon, be careful on, um, especially at the start of the race. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna run this down into the chicane, cover as little track as possible, so move the car over to the left. And we're gonna turn in at the 50 ball marker is when we turn in. No need to allow the car to drift out to the right hand side, stay to the middle of the track, don't lose time. If anything, you lose time allowing the car to move over to the right hand side because you're covering more track than, risk, than is required. And we're gonna pause it here because what we're keeping an eye out for is 100 ball marker because that is our, our visual, to be honest, but we're not breaking anywhere near the 100 ball marker. We are breaking for what I would say is about the 130 marker, 125 marker. So just as it kind of is about to go out of view is when you start to um, start to break. Once again, it's, I am always personally looking at the 100 ball marker in a reference to know when to break, but it's down to fill. A lot of it is down to fill. So once again, a bit of practice is required. And this last chicane is where a lot of time, is where the fast guys in particular, I remember sitting there in, in GT3 and thinking, how, how are they making up so much time than me? How are they so much quicker? And it is because of this last chicane, because there is a particular way to carry speed through here and it is called trail braking. Now, what most people will do, as you can see, I did for a brief second get full, full brakes, um, which you don't want to do because there is no ABS in this uh, in this car. Very easy to lock up. What you want to do, or what I see a lot of people doing first and foremost, is applying too much brake and slowing the car down too much, so that they're almost going in, going into the chicane um, at a snail's pace. That's not the case. What you want to do is should be shifting down all the way through the gears and we are going to get into first here. And we're going to start turning in as there's kind of a kink here, as you can see, where the track starts to go over to the right hand side. That is our turning point. That's when we start turning. So we're shifting down. And we only shift down into first kind of just before the chicane because as I've said a number of times already, if we shift down too quickly through those gears, the car pulls up and we lose momentum. And what we're doing at this moment in time is as you can see, I'm trail braking. I'm now slightly starting to release off the brake. And then as I get onto this curb, well, not onto it because we don't want to go over it. We want to get as close as we can to this curb because as, as I've said once again, a number of times, the car likes to bobble up and down over curbs. We're then able to get on the throttle a lot sooner and we're carrying so much speed. So it's all about trail braking through here. Brake, 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 trail braking round, back on the throttle lift off halfway in through the corner through the chicane once again as tight to the apex as possible and then here is where you then want to get the steering straight pointing at the apex as it goes round to the right and get on the full throttle so so important now this is exactly where the lower traction control settings from the original setup, uh, the PDS setup, it was, me personally, it was just sliding about all, all over the place. The rear was just too um, wild and I had to lift off the throttle. Uh, a number of times I did um, lose it here. I did spin, which is quite um, quite unique. I've never had that before, <laughs> only in this car. So make sure you get the car pointing straight. Two wheels on this red and white curb full throttle and then let the traction control do its work. You'll hear it gripping. 
and then down and across the line. And there we go, guys. That is the analysis of the flying lap, my first LMP2 track guide around Suzuka. Um, I hope that has been informative to you, uh, beneficial to you. Hopefully, uh, it makes you quicker and more consistent. Of course, IMSA racing is just as much of, as being able to navigate the traffic um, in a safe manner. Um, so hopefully, yeah, this is this has helped you um, know what gears to use around certain corners and certain lines, and, and make you uh, yeah just more consistent and let that traffic. Um, more consistently as well so yeah let me know what you think in the comments below guys um always up for some feedback um i will be jumping in the car hopefully this weekend when i feel <laughs> a bit better and uh, doing some races so hopefully i'll see you all out on track but yeah, remember to hit that like and subscribe button feel free to join the discord in the link in the description below where i will be sharing this setup and i'll see you again for the next one